In this video, we'll walk through running a mixed design ANOVA in SPSS. So we have a faux data set here that consists of 35 students' um, data, and this data set is mocked up to be similar to the data that Fung and Gromko collected for their 2001 Psychology of Music article where they ran an experiment where they had some kids in a passive listening condition and others in an active listening condition. And they had them write and invent notation for the music they were listening to in each condition. And they scored that music on the basis of their representation of pitch and their representation of temporal elements of rhythm and beat. So this is our data set we have here. And if you'll notice, we have uh, a, a variable that has a unique code identifier for each participant. Uh, an independent variable here that has uh, that is a between subjects variable. In other words, that has a division of participants where there are some participants in the passive group and some in the active group. And then we have repeated measures of these people. So measurements on two occasions uh, is one way to think about it. So for each individual, we have a pitch score and a rhythm score. So in order to analyze the differences between uh, passive and active listening conditions for both pitch and rhythm, we need to use uh, ANOVA design that allows us to include both a between subjects factor and a within, or in other words, repeated subjects factor. So that's really the nature of mixed design ANOVA, is when you have multiple independent variables. In this case, we can say one independent variable is the experimental treatment of listening mode, uh, and the other being the independent variable of musical characteristic. Uh, and when you have two, uh, one of which is between subjects and the other is within subjects. So like most analyses, the first things that we should do is probably take a look at our assumptions. So we need to look for uh, normality of uh, the pitch and rhythm scores according to the categories of listening mode. We also need to look at the homogeneity of the variance of pitch and rhythm scores according to listen mode. And since we're going to be running uh, a mixed design that involves a repeated measures factor, we could also be concerned with the issues of uh, sphericity as an assumption for repeated measures ANOVA. We'll see later on though, that if you only have two occasions, sphericity is not an issue. Uh, sphericity really only comes into play if you have more than two occasions that are measure, uh, of measurements. So uh, to analyze our data for the assumption of normality, we would go to descriptive statistics and explore. And we can include our pitch and rhythm score variables in our dependent list, and then ask explore to divide those variables according to listening mode. And then also ask for normality plots with tests. Click continue and okay. See in our output, we have an accounting of all the participants for each group and for each uh, measurement occasion, the descriptive statistics, in the same arrangement, and then a test of normality. So the pitch scores are distributed normally in the passive condition as well as the active condition, and the rhythm slash beat scores are distributed normally in the passive condition and the active condition as well. So we're good, we've met our assumptions of normality. The other assumptions, homogeneity, variance, and sphericity would, will come with the, uh, as, as default uh, or as options in actually running our mixed design analysis. So now moving on to running the actual mixed design ANOVA, we'll go to Analyze and General Linear Model, and we need, need to choose the Repeated Measures option because we have uh, these two musical characteristics that are measures of the same individuals. And we can give it a useful name. We can call it Musical Characteristics. And we say there are two levels of that independent variable of musical characteristics pitch and rhythm, and then click define. And now you see there's a spot waiting for our two levels of musical characteristics, our within subjects variable, and a spot for our between subjects variable. So that's the basic setup. And of course, the interaction of the within subjects variable and the between subjects variable will also uh, automatically be generated by SPSS. So let's also ask for a plot, and we'll make uh, listening mode, active or passive, uh, be marked on the horizontal axis, and then ask for separate lines according to pitch or rhythm beat scores. Click to add that in. Continue. 
And under options, uh, we can ask for estimates of effect, si of effect size. And then, as we said before, uh, homogeneity of variance tests uh, are an option in this analysis. So we can ask for that as well to make sure we're OK there. And click Continue. And then OK, and we should get what we need. All right, so in this general linear model output, we have an accounting of the within subjects factors, the between subjects factors, and the number of people within each factor uh, category. Uh, we have a test of assumptions for a multivariate test, but we are going to ignore these two boxes because we're not interested in analyzing this data using multivariate tests. If we had a repeated or a, a measurement occasions that are greater than two, and we only have pitch and rhythm beats only two occasions, we would actually get a meaningful value for the Mockley's test of seriousity. But again, since we only have two um, occasions, this test is, is null. So we're fine there. We, we don't have to worry about the assumption of, of seriousity. Really what we're going to focus on now is the test of within subjects effects to look at uh, differences according to pitch and rhythm. In other words, musical characteristics, the interaction of the musical characteristics in listening mode, and then down here, the test of between subjects effects, whether uh, listening mode made a difference uh, across both musical characteristics considered at the same time. So since we have met the assumption of sphericity, or since it's not an issue with two uh, occasions of measurement, we can interpret this top line of musical characteristics and we see that yes indeed uh, when controlling for which condition participants are in there is a significant difference between the sophistication of the children's notation let's say in the pitch versus rhythm and beat and with an eta squared value of 0.44 that's quite a large effect. We see that musical characteristics in, in listening mode for again look at this top line since sphericity is not a problem is non-significant, so there's no significant interaction between these two independent variables and a smaller effect size there, but since it's non-significant, we basically stop our interpretation of the process there. In regard to our between subjects effects, here's our test of the quality of variances, and we've met the assumption of homogeneity of variances. And here is the line we would interpret for looking at whether uh, there's a difference in their notational sophistication as a function of active versus passive listening, and it is significant, less than 0.05, and again, a relatively large effect uh, with an eta squared value of 0.15. So we can look at the plot now to get a little bit more of an intuitive sense of what's happening here, and right away you can see that the scores for uh, sophistication of marking uh, what the musical characteristic one, which in our case, since we entered pitch first, is pitch, these scores in their notational sophistication are, are much higher than the rhythm or beat, and we see that, uh, on average, the active uh, condition led to higher uh, notational sophistication scores than the passive condition. But these lines are fairly parallel. They're fairly flat with respect to each other. So there isn't an interaction of these two elements.